Hey, uh, hello, welcome. So this video is about a little technique that I stumbled upon last night. Uh, so I'm very new to this. I'm not claiming that I have any expertise here. This is just something that uh, I figured out how to do and I'm excited and want to share that. So I'm going to call this uh, technique green table as a, as a catch-all term. Um, so what this is, it's, it's related or in the ballpark of granular synthesis. And granular synthesis is its own whole thing. I don't claim to know a ton about it. It's a rabbit hole I have not yet dove down, but I certainly will in the future. Um, but I know that the general concept is that you take these little grains or these little tiny slices of an audio file and you arrange them sequentially to make uh, different sounds and different timbres and stuff like that. So um, what we're doing here is somewhat in that vein, but it's, uh, it's also related to wavetable synthesis um, that uh, I've been talking about for a bit here. So this, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm kind of combining those two terms and calling it green table, um, and we'll see where that takes us. So first off, just to get a sense of it, this is uh, the sound that I created last night that inspired me to make this video. So if that sounds interesting to you, well, uh, let's uh, go over how we do that. So um, I'll go into a new blank pattern here. And so the general idea um, is that we're going to use a wavetable as our starting point. And um, so the ones I'm specifically using here, I mean, I believe this technique should work with any wavetable that you choose. Uh, the ones that I'm using are the um, Adventure Kit wavetables. So I've got a whole, where is it? Yeah, I got a folder of wavetables, AKWF. Um, these are free and fantastic, and you should definitely start with these. And there's, uh, I don't know, a bunch of them. 15 or 30 or something in here. Um, so I'm just going to pick one at random, number eight, sounds good. So uh, as with any wavetable, um, we're going to turn on loop mode. And um, so right now I'll just play it so you get a sense of what it is already. Oh, I don't have any uh, anything sequenced in there. There we go, okay. So that's just playing the wavetable through. Um, it sounds like, do I have some? No, it's all off, okay. Okay. Um, so, oh, it's because of decay, that's right. So if I put decay all the way up to infinite and then played that, it would just make that sound forever, right? So let's turn our decay back down. So um, first thing I want to do is change the length down to one. Boom, boom. Okay, so length of one. So now we're going to get, uh, since we're looping it, we're just going to get a tone. And um, let me turn that volume up maybe a little bit. Okay. And um, so this is kind of the basis of doing any sort of a wavetable synthesis, right? So um, what's getting interesting here is now what I'm going to do is use the LFO to play with um, the start point. So specifically, I'm leaving the start point at zero on purpose for now, okay? And uh, so let's go into the LFO menu here and go to destination, and I'm going to change the destination to be the sample start point. And now here's the other kind of bit of the trick. The depth here, you rarely want to do this with the LFO, but I want to crank the depth up all the way to max. Which takes a while. I think maybe you can hold function. No, nope, you can't, <laughs> okay. So yeah, just keep turning. Uh, 63 is the max, there it is, okay. So the reason I'm doing that is because what we want to do is we want to tell the LFO um, from the starting point of zero, I want you to have the entire range. Uh, there, there's a, a, the max range here is 120, right? So I want you to have the entire range of zero to 120 to play within, meaning that the LFO can basically access the entire wavetable file. Um, and now we're going to set this to the random or sample and hold wave. And then the multiplier is, I think, kind of a personal taste thing. Let's start with, the, I think eight is what I used last night. Let's start with that. Um, and let's just see what this does as is. Okay, so you can hear, um, it's, you're still hearing a bit of that tone, but it's, there's, you know, this kind of crazy static stuff because the, uh, the LFO is now 
randomly kind of changing the start point uh, as, the, as the file plays. So now the next thing here is I'm going to want to sequence this. Um, so we'll just stick with the 16 step loop is fine right now. I'm going to turn on every single tree, all right? And they're all going to play just the default note for now, and that's fine. So let's play that. So to my ears, that is already in the ballpark of awesome. Um, now, there's plenty more we can do with this, and from this point forward, I think it's kind of uh, personal taste. So that's what we've done so far. That is basically the technique. Um, you want to set the length to one, you want to use the LFO with a random wave, and then um, give it full depth on the start point uh, to modulate that. But yeah, feel free to explore more. So like, let's play with the, the depth, or the multiplier. something else uh, definitely adding effects to this so I'm going to add in delayed reverb um. This is a point where I do kind of wish we had more than one LFO per track because like I would love to do an LFO on the pitch as well, but I can't because it's already you know being used on my sample start point here. But the kind of uh, I wouldn't even call it a workaround, it's just like the, the solution to that is um, just to do the live recording or motion recording as it's often called, or recording automation, all kinds of names for it. So I'll do some of that. <laughs> I really like this actually. As you LFO's speed of zero is like kind of turning it off basically. So you're um, you're getting back to kind of the more standard tones that you would hear, and then you turn it, crank it way up or way down, and get wild again. So here's another really fun thing. So we have the the length set to one, right? So it's just playing one little snippet of that wavetable file. Well, try playing with slightly longer lengths. Depending on the file you're using, you can get these really interesting uh, kind of just like thickness to the sound. you know, we can kind of swap out the wavetable file underneath all the rest of this, and all this still applies, right? So it's just trying to work. Set 
that reach rate to have a different percentage than the rest. Say this is like an auxiliary trick you can use this on lots of different types of stuff but one thing i've been noticing like as i kind of analyze other people's patches and stuff that i think is pretty interesting is um using the, the filter resonance all right you can like create this huge peak right using that peak to really emphasize uh what you um the the frequencies that you want to hear so like i've been kind of using the filter as a way of like getting rid of unwanted frequencies but i um, i'm starting to now use it with the resonance here as a way of emphasizing certain frequencies the downside being that there is no notch filter in this, so you do have to get rid of something. But anyway, uh, crank up the resonance a bit and then I'll play with this and see where it sounds good. drum right under this thing and uh, see how that sounds. So let's see, let me go in here, get me a nice fatty bass drum. Kick drum, whatever you want to call it. That's only using two tracks so far, you know, kind of simple kick drum and then this wild green table thing, whatever we're calling it. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can go pretty deep with this, of course. Um, certainly the the risk here being that it's easy to add way, way, way too much sound. So this is like one of these uh, techniques where you might end up not using all six tracks and that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope that uh, is fun for you as well, inspiring. And uh, yeah, let me know if you make anything with this. Um, I'm gonna definitely keep playing with this effect and. Hopefully it'll show up in my music. All right, cheers.